I'm not gonna pretend this is not normal. These are our family Christmas pajamas. <laughs> and this is my dad, Jerry. Hello. Jerry Bowler is also a historian, also a professor, and uh, but he has a slightly different expertise. I like Christmas. <laughs> I study it a lot. He loves Christmas. Uh, so because uh, Jerry Bowler, the other Dr. Bowler, is a professor and an expert of Christmas, I thought I'd ask him, because we're starting out the 12 days of Christmas, what are the 12 days of Christmas? The 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day, and they run until January 6th, which is Epiphany. It has been a part of church culture since um, the earliest uh, medieval days, the Council of Tours set it up as uh, 12 days of um, holiday, essentially, for um, the, the serfs of medieval Europe. And uh, this is an, a, a dead spot in the agricultural year in the Middle Ages. So it was a time given over to being happy, to being festive, largely, um, except for one day in which you're supposed to be sad. Which day? Well, we'll get to that. Don't don't rush me. Um, the first day of Christmas uh, is uh, Christmas Day. The second day of Christmas is St. Stephen's Day, mm -hmm. or the Feast of Stephen. And it was a day given over to charity and to the care of horses, because they got mixed. They got their St. Stephen's mixed up. Uh, December 27th is St. John's Day, St. John the Evangelist Day, and that's a day for getting your wine blessed. Well, that's, that's an everyday here in the pandemic world. St. <laughs> John was supposed uh, to have um, drunk uh, poisoned wine and, and not been hurt. But the sad day is December 28th, the Feast of the Innocents. Oh, my mom is... <laughs> And, uh, my well, mom is acting as production assistant when she is handing over... This is... Um, a medieval Croatian depiction of all the events of the Nativity, and my wife has not brought me the one for uh, December 28th. Oh ah. um, it comes now. Here is Herod the King in his raging, um, telling the uh, his he was troops a rhyming murderer at the time. Yes, uh, to kill the uh, children, of, the boy children of Israel. Uh, if you take a look at the um, the savage treatment of that young lad, there I once put this on a on my a quiz for my my students, saying what part of the nativity does this represent? And the best answer I got was uh, the circumcision of Jesus. <laughs> um, but it, it was in fact. Uh, I'm a little worried <laughs> about how that. The massacre that student <laughs> of the boy children. And so on and on it goes until um, the evening of Epiphany, uh, which thanks to a curious method of counting, Twelfth Night comes before Twelfth Day. Okay. And Twelfth Night is a time for parties and particularly cakes, king cakes, roi, um, a ghetto de roi, and well, now um, you're just showing or off. bean, bean king I, um, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good times for all during those 12 days. But don't worry, but wait, there's more. He could do this until... Indeed. Would you like July. to know what happened? I think we're good here. <laughs> okay. Thanks. That was the 12 days of Christmas. All right. I don't really want to talk about this, but it's famous. And so, um, so we have like a, we have too, I would say too many Advent um home we have too many homes for jesus jesus lives in too many places in our home and uh and anyway it's got a cast of characters i always like to add where's luther um your mom took luther away well, well i always like to add him as like the bossy add-on to <laughs> anybody's like someone who comes in and tells you what's what but my dad has a different favorite character well nativity scenes are uh quite popular throughout history and uh, it's the custom to have not only the Holy Family in your creche, but also various townsfolk, soldiers, shepherds, uh, wise men, and so on. But in northeastern Spain, in Catalonia, they have a peculiar figure called the Cahana, um, which is essentially the pooper. <laughs> now, this is uh, the, the pooper in his most traditional form. He is a peasant dressed in the um, peasant costume of Catalonia, 
and he is um, voiding his bowels. No, I don't think we need to show that part. All right. Thank you. Um, or so I, I like that you explained the thing to people. <laughs> All right. In he, he's known <laughs> as the pooper. And it, it is a tradition, um, an almost inviolable law, that he be placed inside the nativity scene. Um, you can now buy him uh, in the shape of uh, famous soccer players or popes <laughs> or movie stars. Um, Barcelona, the city, um, had a campaign against uh, public urination and defecation, and the city government felt that it was a very bad example to have a life-size pooper <laughs> in the city's life-size nativity scene, and so they took him out and it was met by uh, <laughs> riotous opposition by yeah. Barcelonans take who demanded, that. put our pooper back for Christmas. War on Christmas takes it a surprising takes turn. a number of turns, yeah. <laughs> well, that was horrifying. Let's not do this again. Thanks so much. So when I was, I don't know, maybe starting when I was 16, my dad hired me to start doing Christmas research. Uh, by the time I was 18, I was trying not to do that in order to work at Perkins Family Restaurant, the one that burnt down because it was struck by lightning. Not once, <laughs> not twice, but three times. Indeed. Uh, but the rest of the time, I tried to learn things like this tradition. Well, St. Nicholas, as you know, is the originator of Santa Claus. And he was based on uh, a genuine uh, bishop of the Middle East, uh, who became the patron saint of children and the most powerful male saint of the Middle Ages. Um, he is uh, was buried in uh, what is now Turkey in a little town called uh, Demri. And uh, having been, uh, been there, I visited it and got this um, remembrance of him, which consists of his icon, um, holy water blessed by the Orthodox Patriarch, dirt from his um, gravesite, and a wonderful, miraculous liquid that exudes from his tomb. Oh. Now, this is only where the story starts getting good. In the 11th century, um, the Mediterranean was invent, uh, in, invaded by Normans, essentially Vikings, who had Christianized and gotten haircuts, but had never <laughs> lost the desire to go to foreign places, kill them and take their land. I should hope not. So they um, settled in Southern Italy and wanted a set of relics for their, their new settlement. So they decided to sail to uh, Southern Turkey and steal the bones of St. Nicholas. So they sailed to uh, Demri, uh, tortured the monks of the Orthodox Church there until the monks gave them a set of bones and they sailed away back to Italy and set up a new cathedral in the town of Barry. And um, people who believe that he's there come in pilgrimage in great numbers and his tomb exudes a miraculous uh, aromatic liquid. Except but back in Turkey, the monks said, ha ha, we gave you the wrong body. We've still got the real St. Nicholas. So we have two competing tombs of St. Nicholas. Uh, the one in Italy is generally venerated by Catholics who come there in great numbers. The one in um, Demri, Turkey, is venerated by the Orthodox Church, and the town is crawling with uh, Russian uh, pilgrims. Both exude a miraculous liquid, huh. and I have the Orthodox version here. I just want to add maybe that as someone who recently had stage four cancer. I'm a little surprised that this stayed sealed when some of us could have been could using have used it. it. Yeah, but what was more precious to me, a trip to Turkey or the life of my daughter? It was a fight and you know who won. Okay, we're going to wrap this one up. So um, among the many Christmas treasures we have are things that look like they're going to be delicious, but then are not. They are unfortunately focused on our Lord and Savior. In the 18th century, there were... <laughs> I like that every paragraph starts that way. Well, it has to. I'm a historian. <laughs> In the 
the 18th century. In the 18th century, <laughs> Go on. the Austrian emperor, uh, Joseph, was a bit of a deist, a bit of an anti-Christian, and he banned large outdoor nativity scenes. Oh. But the Austrians, being devout Catholics... At the time. And <laughs> largely still, I think, um, wanted to keep their nativity scenes, and so they brought them indoors and miniaturized them, and there is a peculiar kind of Austrian uh, nativity scene set inside a chocolate box. And these tiny little figures um, show the adoration of the baby in the bottom and the annunciation of uh, the birth of Jesus to the shepherds at the top. It says made in China here. It is does not. <laughs> you rascal. It doesn't. It doesn't. But it does have, what's that? Roman numerals? It is a Roman numeral, M-M-I-V. In Austria, it is customary to have um, the house uh, spiritually cleansed at Christmas. A priest will go through and, and holy water the place. Um, uh, during the Epiphany season, and then mark on a doorpost or somewhere the initials of the three kings, um, Caspar, Melchior, and... Um, Caspar, I knew Melchior. you were stalling and Caspar, it made me happy. Yeah, okay, yeah. And now when I talk, yes. you can't think. No, I can't. <laughs> Caspar, Melchior, and yes. Balthazar! Says my mom in the back. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> with, uh, with the year underneath. And so that was um, the mark there of uh, the year. Great. Do you M M I V two thousand and four. Maybe we could have a priest stop by and cleanse us of sarcasm. Uh, no, no, it's uh, it's part of the <laughs> part of the bowler ethos. I'm afraid. It's in the foundations. So just like a regular normal thing that happens frequently is to have a box full of boxes of other boxes of people called Yule Lads. Well, this uh, technically is not the Yule Lad, this is the Yule Lad's dad. Okay. <laughs> um, Iceland is a very strange place, uh, separated for centuries um, by, by the Little Ice ocean. Age and uh, <laughs> yeah, ocean. So they developed very strange Christmas customs, uh, one of which was the belief in a, a family of sort of gnomes um, who weren't very nice. Uh, the father and the mother were, to put no fine point on it, cannibals. What? <laughs> and their sons, uh, traditionally numbering 13... <laughs> Is that why um, there's so many boxes? Invade, yes. And your stufer? Invade the home um, starting in Advent. And they arrive one at a time. Yola Kortunen. Oh, that's a cat. That's the cat. A very nasty creature. You don't want to mess with him. Um, they invade your house uh, one at a time, the 13 days before Christmas, and then start leaving one at a time until they're all gone by... Um, the Hortz Nativity. I'm, I'm, I've got such a light, nimble tongue for the Icelandic language. Indeed. So. Yeah. Um, they have names like Door Slammer and Meat Hook and uh, Yogurt Stealer. Um, they get up to all kinds of, of stuff. Now, um, the, the stories originally were so terrifying, uh, the Danish government made, against, made it against the law to tell kids about them. But now they've been smurfified <laughs> and they're, they're, they're sweet little gift bringers that bring little, little gifts. Um, in the days before Christmas. To be smurfified. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping that's fate. what's going to happen to you in your old age. <laughs> You'd be smurfified. I'll be Papa Smurf, yeah. Well, that's why I put him in that shirt. 